Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A very good morning to everyone. I am Rawi Al Qadir, head of smart banking and mass segments at Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, and I will be your host for today's event. Before we start, I would like to go through some housekeeping guidelines for you to have the best experience in our virtual platform. To start with, it is recommended to exit all background application and other inactive web tabs to avoid your internet bandwidth from overloading. Please ensure that you minimize all kinds of distraction by keeping your phone on a silent mode. For the for the Q&A question, you will be able to submit your you will be able to submit your question all the way through the session. I will pass them on to the doctor, and the doctor will answer them. Before we start our webinar, I have a couple of questions for you that will show on the screen, and please participate and vote. The first question, finding a lump in your breast means you have a breast cancer. Is this a myth or a fact? So is it false statement or a fact statement? Finding a lump on your breast means you have a breast cancer. waiting for your votes. So is the statement is a myth or is it a fact? Is it a true statement or it's a false statement? Now to the second question. Breast cancer only occurs on women who have family history. Is it a myth? Is it a fact? I'll repeat the question again. Breast cancer only occurs in women who have family history. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Few seconds more to vote. Thank you all for participating. This is an interesting result. Today, breast cancer is one of the leading cancer in the UAE. One of the four cancer patients are diagnosed with breast cancer. A research by Dr. Guncha revealed that the breast cancer numbers varies from one country to another in Asia, whereas in the United Arab Emirates, 568 cases have been diagnosed, meaning 22.8 women over from 100,000 women been diagnosed with breast cancer. These numbers are high, yet we need to remember that there are survivors, survivors who took control of their health and armed themselves with knowledge. The power of knowledge, the power of early detection. It's my great pleasure today to introduce Dr. Noura Hajar from MediClinic, who will share her extensive experience on breast cancer, the causes, the symptoms, and the different treatment of the procedure. Ladies, join me in welcoming Dr. Noura Hajar. Dr. Hajar, we are delighted to have you today. The virtual floor you. is yours. Thank you, Rawia, very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy that I'm with you today. I'm very interested in that poll's uh, results. Um, being here today, you have to be proud of yourselves because you need to know more about your breast. And this is the first step in combating the breast cancer. You need to know more to, to, to remove the fear, for you to know more how to deal with this, whether to prevent it or if it happens, how to deal with it. So let us start with the presentation. 
Today, we're discussing about the breast cancer awareness. My presentation today is divided into three parts. First, breast cancer risk factors, breast self-examination, and imaging of the breast. The first part is about the risk factors. Uh, to start with, being a female is the major risk factor because it puts you at 100 times risk other than men. This does not mean that men are immune from having cancer breast, and the, this will be discussed at the very end. But women having their uh, female hormones and glandular tissues makes them, makes them put them at 100 times risk than men. There is a uh, results that says that one out of eight women gets cancer breast. And as we grow older, the risk of getting cancer breast is a bit higher. Uh, there is also a, a genetic factor. Um, uh, some ladies have BRCA1 and BRCA2. This puts them at getting the cancer breast at younger age. Sometimes they get it bilateral in both breasts, and sometimes they get it with or consequently with uh, getting another cancer like ovarian cancer. Having a first degree relative with cancer breast like mother, sister, or daughter uh, increases the risk by two folds. Having more than one first degree relative increases the risk even further. Uh, the personal history of having the lady has a cancer breast before, so this increases the risk to three to four folds even more. Not a recurrence, a newly developed cancer. So it, it doesn't mean that if I get treated from, one, uh, from cancer breast at a certain point, that that's it, I don't need to follow anymore. No, I need to regularly check up my breast still. The density of the breast. Uh, let me tell you, the breast is composed of glandular tissues and fat. Uh, as we grow older, the glandular tissues tend to decrease in number and the, the, the fat takes over. So uh, some women uh, tend to preserve their glandular tissues and this puts them at, at higher, a bit higher risk of one to two folds. Some of the findings in the breast biopsy put the lady at higher uh, risk as well and this uh, needs to be regularly checked up as well. Having the period for long durations, uh, meaning that if the period started before the age of 12 and it stayed beyond the age of 55, so basically we are getting exposed to the hormonal stimulus for a very long time. Uh, and this increases the risk a little bit. Some unfortunate kids, unfortunately, gets like leukemia, so at younger age, they get exposed to chest irradiation along the chest wall, uh, chest bone here in this part. So this uh, predisposes their uh, um, breast precursors to irradiation, which is a risk by itself. So they sometimes get uh, cancer breast, even sometimes in adolescence. So these kids needs to be checked regularly, even at younger age. There are uh, certain lifestyles that prevents or increases the risk of cancer breast. Like if the lady has like four kids and she breastfed them all, this decreases her risk, but it does not immunize her from getting cancer breast. And this is one of the main points that we need to uh, understand today. Breastfeeding helps decreasing the risk by 30%, but it does not immunize the lady from getting cancer breast. Um, uh, breastfeeding, uh, at the time of breastfeeding, uh, any lump needs to be checked still. If the lady is fortunate enough and she gets her pregnant at younger age, this still helps her to prevent uh, preventing herself from cancer breast, but it does not immunize. Uh, uh, some ladies take uh, hormonal replacement therapy after the menopause. Uh, they take home hormonal supply, female hormonal supply, and this increases the stimulus. It is like as if the period did not stop. So the, the hormonal stimulus is continuous by the hormonal exogenous hormone taken from uh, the pills. So this put them at risk as well. Um, um, as anything else, the more the alcohol, the more the risk for lots of things, as well as the risk for cancer breast. Exercising is helpful in everything. It helps. Reducing the stress, it helps um, reducing the weight, and we will talk about the weight because the more the weight of the lady, the more the liability of the internal steroids to be 
uh, transformed to excess hormonal uh, stimulus and increases the risk as well. Some uh, ethnic groups are more exposed to um, higher risks of cancer breast, like, for example, the African Americans, and they have their own guidelines by the American uh, society. Okay, so what should we do? There are certain risks that can be modified and others that cannot be modified. So the solution is to breast exam yourself or to be examined by a doctor. So there is two types of examination. Either I, ex I examine my breast myself or I let the doctor examine the breast. For uh, the breast uh, to be checked by a doctor, the recommendation is to be checked by a doctor every three years between the age of 20 and 30 and every one year afterwards. So still, this is a long duration for, for the breast to be checked. So I have myself to interfere. I have to examine myself every month after the period uh, in certain positions. Um, for the breast to be examined properly, it has to be examined after the period. Because if I examine the breast before the period, the hormone is there to stimulate the glandular tissues. Stimulating the glandular tissues makes it more lumpy and bumpy. So if I examine my breast, for example, uh, one week before the period, I will feel lots of lumps and bumps. I will feel that I have newly developed lesions, which is not true. It is the effect of hormone on the glandular tissues. So I need to, to wait until the, the period is stopped, and then I examine myself. How should I examine myself? I need to do th three things, actually. I need to take a look first at my breast, see lots of things, and then examine with my hands, and then take an action. For me to start examining my breast, I need to be to take off my clothes from, I need to expose my chest wall and my arms fully. I don't expose one breast at a time to check it because I need to compare. I need to, to stand in front of the mirror um, and take a look. How do my breasts look like? I have to introduce myself to my body. This is the most important thing. If I don't know my body, I will not know what is new and what is not, okay? So I need to, I need to look at the breast uh, and take a look whether they look symmetrical or not. Uh, and one thing I need to say here that most of the women don't have symmetrical breasts. Like if my right eye does not look like my left eye exactly. There is a bit of change or difference in size or whatever. I need to appreciate it first to know what is my normal. So looking at myself in the, in the mirror, I have to check the size difference, the color of the skin, the color of the nipple and areola. Is there any lumps or bumps seen without me checking with my hands? Uh, is there any skin discoloration? Is, uh, what about the nipple, the direction of the nipple? Is it in the normal direction or in an abnormal direction? Whether the nipple is outside or is this inside? Whether it goes in and out, whether it is in from the start, whether it became inside newly. So uh, if the normal of a lady that the, the nipple is inside from the start, this is normal, this is not abnormal. But if the normal of the nipple is to come out and then all of a sudden it starts to be pulled in and cannot come out, this is a warning sign that we will discuss later, okay? Then I need to change my position. I first uh, just simply stand in front of the mirror and took a look, okay? Then I will have to put my hands on my hips and see. Is there any changes in the skin? Any lumps that I can see? Any depressions in the skin? If not, I have to uh, put my hands above my head and lean forward to change the position of the breast and see if there is any changes that will appear, okay? And then these are the signs that we, we will need to follow. Uh, for the nipple, we will start from the nipple. The nipple position, color, uh, whether the nipple size is normal or not, whether uh, there is a change in the color, whether there is a change in the size. Sometimes the, the nipple gets as if it is erased 
as if you have erased the, the nipple. Is there any scales around it? Any things that I can pull out newly? Did I check with my dermatologist? Is If this thing is not going away, we need to check with the surgeon. Uh, is there any nipple retraction? Is it coming out again? Or is it a persistent, newly developed nipple retraction? Is there any a spontaneous discharge from the nipple? Is there any redness? Is, is the nipple hard, newly hard? This is not the normal texture of the nipple. Um, uh, and for the rest of the breast, we need to, to see whether there is skin discoloration, any lump or bump, any depression. Sometimes the breast gets uh, the look of a peau d'orange, which is the skin of the orange with lots of dimples, lots of depressions. Uh, sometimes uh, we can see uh, lots of veins, bluish veins, new vessels around the, uh, the, the breast that was not there, provided that I'm not breastfeeding, because normally in the breastfeeding, you will see lots of engorging vessels around the breast, which is normal in breastfeeding. Um, whether uh, there is a change in the shape, the, the breast is deviated to one side, more hard, more red. Okay. And in this part, I need to say that the breast is not only the part that we see on the chest wall. The breast is continuing under the armpit, in the armpit area. Okay, so the breast is not anterior only. It is anterior and under the armpit, whether we feel it or not. There is breast tissues in the armpit. Okay, so we have to end the examination of a, of a breast by examining the axilla or the armpit. Okay, this is the part where we, we took a look at our breasts. What about feeling the breast with our hands? There is three patterns of examining your breast. There is a circular way to examine the breast, an up, a linear way, up, down, up, down, up, down. And there is um, a radial way where we go from outside in, inside out, outside in, and so on, towards the nipple. So for this thing, I need to know that I have to examine the breast if if you take a look at this ball, for example, and we say that this is the breast, um, this is a small breast now. I will tell you how to examine the big breast later. If this is a small breast, non-pendulous breast, and I need to examine it, there is three ways of examining it. In the whole, in the all three ways, I need to examine with the palm of my fingers, this area of my fingers, not the tips of the fingers, because, because if I feel anything with the tips of my fingers, especially the breast, I'll feel lots of lumps and bumps that are not there. So for the circular way of examining the breast, I have to palpate the breast with my uh, palm of fingers. I have to every single spot to feel it twice. So if I'm feeling this spot, I have to uh, do a little bit of pressure, a light pressure to feel the skin and just underneath the skin. Whether I feel something in the skin, anything hard in the skin or un just underneath, or not. And then I have to do a, a, a harder pressure or a firmer pressure to feel deep inside. I have to feel to compress against my chest wall, my ribs. I have to put the breast tissue between the chest wall, which is my hand here, and my other fingers to feel it once slightly and once more firmly. Okay. And then in the circular motion, I shift without moving my hands away from the breast. If you move your hands, away from the breast, you miss one part, you miss examining one spot, and you should not do that. So I examine lightly, and then firmly this part, and then I shift my fingers, I examine lightly, and then firmly against the chest wall, and so on, lightly, firmly, lightly, firmly, and I go circular in circular motion until I reach the nipple. I have to examine the nipple itself, pull it out, and feel how it, it feels, I have to feel the whole areola region again, and then I end my examination in the small breast by examining the axilla. To examine the axilla, you have to put, if I'm examining my left axilla or armpit, I have to put my hand above my head with the palms of the other hand fingers. I have to compress this area against the bone, against always against the bone, not obliquely where you feel that there is no nothing behind me to compress the tissues. I have to compress properly until I feel the bone. 
for me to feel if there is any lymph nodes, any lumps, or anything. Okay? So these are the three ways that you examine the breast that is small, over, lying over the chest wall. What about the big breast? The big breast that is pendulous, going down. If this is the pendulous part of the breast, you have to put it on, on your other hand, and the other hand will act like the chest wall. And then you examine with your other hand. You have to examine the pendulous press, the, the up, down, up, down, linear manner is the easiest way. Not the radial, not the whirly or the, uh, the, the circular motion. The up, down, up, down, up, down is the easiest way to examine a pendulous press. The same way, lightly and then firmly, and then I shift my fingers lightly and firmly and so on. Okay? I have to, to stress again that I have to examine at the very end the armpit or the axilla. Okay? After I examined my breast, sometimes I will feel something. Uh, according to the poll, we will know the results now. Uh, fortunately enough that 90% of what the, the, lump, uh, the, the lumps that I will feel are not malignant. They are benign, but still there is an, a 10% risk. I have to get checked by a doctor at that point of time. So if I feel a lump, I have to assure, reassure myself that most of the time it will be benign but I have to take an expert opinion. I have to go to the doctor, to the surgeon, to check my breast, or to, to a doctor to check your breast, first of all. Then the doctor will check by his hands and then will send the lady to do one of the imaging modalities for the breast. I will take you through the, the machines for you to know what is expected, what you will find when you come and check your breast. The first main modality is the mammogram mammogram or tomosynthesis. This is the, our machine, actually. This is the mammogram machine where the lady changed and put her gown as a rope, opened from the front. The technologist will take her and position her on the machine. This is the tube where the x-rays get uh, generated. And this is where we take the image. <clears throat> the lady will put her breast, by, the technician will help her to put the breast in two positions, one in the vertical position and one in an oblique position to take two images for each breast. And then when the lady, if the lady has a dense breast in our machine, because it's a new machine, which is a good machine, we can do her something called tomosynthesis. Uh, when, we, when we take an image for the breast, we take it, everything overlap each other, or everything in all the, the place, or in all the thickness is overlapped. And this sometimes give us a challenge to read the image. <clears throat> But in the new machines, we can do something called tomosynthesis, which is that we take, with the very low dose of exposure, slices, as if we are doing cuts. Imagine with me if I have a transparent book with lots of papers and pages. I have written lots of things in these transparent pages, and I close the book. Okay? And I'm taking a look from one side. Everything will be overlapping each other. I will not know where is... The love, letter, the love word, the hate word, the peace word, and so on. So, but if I can flip up and look at each page uh, at a time, I will, can, I will be able to read what is there. And this is the tomosynthesis in simple words, that we take lots of cuts and slices with a small dose. Don't say that the tomosynthesis will give you extra dose. This is not true. This is a, a, the same dose as an image, but split it into lots of uh, cuts, okay? And this will help really in diagnosing more and doing less. And this is the main exam for the breast. When we do the mammogram, it is advisable that we do the mammogram from 40 years of age and above, <clears throat> except if the ladies is a high, the, this lady is high risk. <clears throat> so some of the high risk ladies starts even before 40, but she has to be labeled as high risk lady by the doctor. Not she thinks that she's high risk. Okay, she has, uh, there are certain clinics where you assess your risk factors and then know whether you are from the category of high risk uh, patients for cancer breast or ordinary risk for cancer breast. And at that time, we start sometimes earlier than 40. And mammogram, I, can, I cannot emphasize more. Mammogram is the main exam for the breast. What about if the lady is less than 40 years of age? At that time, 
the doctor will choose to start with an ultrasound. Ultrasound is basically the exam that we do uh, to check the baby. This is the same machine. It's an ultrasonic waves that examine the tissues. Um, we examine both breasts plus the axilla, the, arm, uh, the armpit, because it's part of the breast. And then we see from there. Uh, sometimes, uh, if the lady is less than 40, we start with an ultrasound. If the lady is uh, breastfeeding, we start with ultrasound. If she's lactate, if lactating, we start with, or pregnant, we start with ultrasound. And sometimes after mammogram, if the, the breast is really, really dense, uh, everything is white and overlapping, or sometimes I see uh, a defined lesion there, I cannot know with mammogram whether it is fluid or tissue. At that time, the doctor will still ask for uh, the lady to do an ultrasound to, to know more, which makes the accuracy even higher. And then if the clinical question is not solved, we, we shift to something called an MRI, magnetic resonance imaging of the breast. At that time, it's a different machine <clears throat> where the lady has to lie on the table, on her belly, where there is two cylindrical holes underneath for the breast to, to be pendulous in these cylindrical holes. The exam takes about uh, 25 to 30 minutes. She needs to take an IV um, intravenous uh, injection of contrast, and then we analyze the image. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, we need to know that we need to examine, start uh, breast screening. Breast screening means that you examine your breast with the imaging modalities without having any complaint, without having any complaint. So I should not only go to the doctor when I feel a lump. I, if I feel a lump, for sure I have to go to the doctor. But from age of 40 and above, I need to go and examine my breast even if I don't have any complaint. I need to screen my breast before I feel something which is the main important goal for this thing, is to discover any problem even before I can feel it with my hand, not me, not the surgeon, not anyone. At that point of time, I can catch anything bad early, and at that time, it will be curable. We need to start from 40, not from 50, because two years ago, there was a debate whether we start from 40, whether we start from 50, and then they concluded, the American Society of Breast Imaging concluded that every decade of life, starting from 40, carries the 25% risk of getting cancer breast. So this means that I need to start from 40 years and above. The younger the age, which is 40 to 50, the higher the risk that this breast cancer will be acting in a nasty way. So I need to catch it early, not to leave it until I'm 50. Okay? And this was the message from the American Society of Breast Imaging. And finally, I need to tell you, I cannot emphasize more about the importance of exercising. This is one of the gold factors that we can really change our lives with, not only for cancer breast. Uh, doing exercises decreases the stress. Decreasing the stress relieves the body from lots of toxins, from lots of... Um, Things that changes the, the, the cells to abnormal cells, not only the breast, other parts of your body as well. If you exercise, you will be able to control your weight, which is very important because the increase in weight increases the hormonal uh, stress on the uh, breast and increases the risk. Uh, so if you exercise 30 minutes for at least three to four days, you, have, you get to choose which type of exercise you do according to your fitness. It's not a must to do an intense exercise to get the protection out of it, the 30% protection, because exercising reduces the risk by 30%, which is amazing. As if you're breastfeeding, this is, this is a lot. This is really an, a lot of impact on the breast. And at the very end, you will feel more positive. You will feel lighter in weight. You will, you will enjoy your life more. I hope that uh, the session was helpful for everyone, and I'm open for uh, questions if there, anyone has any questions. Thank you, doctor, for the informative session. It was very good. Uh, we are now open for questions before the fun part. 
Just to remind the ladies, if you are in full mode, please exit it. Scroll down with your screen. You will have a two box over there. Just put your name and add the question. And I'll be passing them to the doctor. So just put your name, question, and I'll pass them on. So here we go, doctor. We'll start with the first question. What are the clearest and the surest symptoms of breast cancer? Again, what Raya, are, I cannot hear you. What are the clearest and the surest symptoms of breast cancer? Can you hear me, doctor? The sure risk. The sure risks. Yeah. Yeah, no, what she's trying, I think what she's trying to ask here, if what are the symptoms that means, that's it, I have a breast cancer. Mm, you cannot say something like that unless you have really ignored your breast for long, long duration, uh, which is not uh, like available in this time anymore. So in the past days, we tend to get ladies with really ulcers on their skin, okay? This is not the presentation anymore because ladies are more aware. When they feel something, they go and get checked even before their skin is involved or they cannot move. This is khalas. If you have some ladies come with an, an ulcer, an oozing ulcer, this, this is not there anymore. Because of the breast awareness is getting better and better uh, with time, this presentation is not there. What I can tell you now that if you feel like a, a bloody nipple discharge, it is a really warning sign, but sometimes it happens with diabetes, for example. example. So you, you should be alarmed, but don't say that this is a sure sign. You need to know from the doctor, from your examination. You, can't, you, you have to come and do the, your mammogram and ultrasound and sometimes your MRI and then take the diagnosis from doctors, not from home. Because sometimes if you tell that this is a sure sign, they, the lady gets afraid and she stays at home. This is not right. This is, you need to come and get checked. Take the words from the doctor, not from home. Uh, yes, doctor, I think that's a very important information. So um, I think we should, as you said, go to the expertise. And also a lot goes to the fact of searching Google. Google is not a doctor. So At yes, all. I, you know. I keep on telling my, uh, my, my patients this way. Uh, I start by asking them their profession. Sometimes they tell me they are, she's a lawyer. I tell her simply, if I read for one week at night, about being a lawyer. I will not be able to be a lawyer. So don't take the bad experience from Google and come with this negative thoughts to start with. No, come and get checked. Every lady has her own experience, has her own stage, has her own experience. So just go into your own pathway. Don't take the bad from all other pathways and, and come with this. Yes, very good. Okay, I have a question here. If breastfeeding mothers, will they get cancer? So while they're breastfeeding, are they are they going to get breast cancer? While they're breastfeeding, um, are they going to get breast cancer? Can you hear me, doctor? Um, uh, I'll repeat the question if I understood it right. Are you saying that if the lady is breastfeeding, can she have a cancer breast? Is yes. this the question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, some ladies get cancer breast while they are breastfeeding. Yes. So you should not ignore if you have a lump while breastfeeding. Because uh, I cannot deny the fact that having a, a, a bad, having a cancer while breastfeeding get, get must for a long time, which does not help the lady. And she should not help the cancer against herself by delaying getting examined. And unfortunately, sometimes these types of cancer behave very badly. So we need to deal with it very early. So if you feel something while you're breastfeeding, still 90% of the time, it will be like a breast engorgement from breastfeeding, an original lump that you did not feel, but you felt it while you're breastfeeding. But still, the, the chances minimal but there you need to check because unfortunately if it is 
uh, a bad thing, we need to catch it early. This is again the same uh, related question on breastfeeding. If I feel a lump one, uh, in one of my breasts after the delivery, do you suggest that I have to go and do a mammogram? Again? Okay, this is again related to breastfeeding. I feel there is a lump mm -hmm. on one of my breasts after my delivery. Do you suggest we, me to have mammogram check? I feel a lump on my breast while breastfeeding and then? Yeah, do I have to do mammogram? Uh, no, in, in the time of breastfeeding, uh, we don't start with a mammogram. <clears throat> we start with an ultrasound, even if the lady is above 40, because um, what I can tell you, uh, in the breastfeeding time, the, bre the breast gets more denser than it was before breastfeeding and the milk is inside and everything is white and it will be very tender to, to, to compress the breast. Plus, if you compress the breast, the, the milk gets squeezed out and so on, it's a mess. We start with an ultrasound. If we find suspicious findings and we are looking for uh, calcifications, at that point of time, we let the lady go out, express her milk out totally, and then we expose her to few uh, much less images to, to examine if we need it. Most of the time we don't. Thank you, doctor. If someone has breast cancer, what is the available treatment at the early stage? Following up the question, <clears throat> does a cancer patient can have or take herbal medication or herbal medicine, alternative medication? So I'll repeat the question. If someone has breast cancer, what is the available treatment in the early stages? And can the patient use herbal medicine, you know, or the alternative medication? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is a very, very good question. Um, if the lady catch the cancer breast early, if we were able and she's lucky to catch the cancer breast early, which will, if she is enrolled in her breast screening program, she will be able to, to catch the breast cancer early because the intervals are less than a, a cancer breast to to be in a bigger size, she will be able to, according to the breast biopsy, at the, we, for example, today, we catch the cancer breast. The doctor, the surgeon will request a biopsy. Why will, will the surgeon request a biopsy? Because we need to know the cell type of this ca cancer. Breast cancer is a big family. Underneath it, there is lots of uh, brothers and sisters from the cell types. According to the cell type, this tissue behaves. And according to this, the, the surgeon and the oncologist will choose the pathway of treatment. Sometimes the treatment, if the, it is early, sometimes they start with a small surgery. They don't remove the whole breast, they remove part of the breast. Sometimes they give uh, chemotherapy to reduce the size of the breast, uh, the, the size of the breast cancer. And then they do a small surgery, they don't remove the whole breast. And uh, according to this, she can, even cure her breast cancer and preserve most of her breast, her own breast. Thank you. Uh, another question, which age women should start the mammogram and how often they're supposed to do it? And which yes. age? Uh, mammogram, and they start, we, we start mammogram in the breast screening program at age of 40. As per uh, UAE guidelines, we, we do the mammogram every two years in the average risk ladies, but the high risk ladies can do them every one year. Okay. Is there any big risk on oversized breast? Like if the breast has a bigger size, do they have more chances to have breast cancer than the smaller ones? So uh, you're asking about the, uh, the chances of getting cancer breast increases with the larger size of the breast. Is this the yes. question? Yes. Yes. In uh, larger breasts, the, the, the weight is uh, a little bit more. So this increases the risk of your own body steroids to get transformed to uh, 
your female hormones. And this puts the breast at a higher stimulus. Higher stimulus means higher risk of cancer breast. Uh, according whether the breast is dense, big, sometimes the breast is like in the grandmothers, the breast is big, but it is fatty. The fatty breast, the, the risk is less because the precursors of the cancer breast are not there, which are the glands. So if the breast is dense and big, this, the, the risk is higher. If the breast is big and fatty, the risk is less. Okay. Can the cancer cells spread to the baby through milk or so through breastfeeding? Can the cancer uh, transmit from the mother to the baby? Rawiya, I cannot hear you properly. Okay. During breastfeeding, can the cell, can the breast cancer cell transform to the baby through milk? Uh, no. If the lady is breastfeeding and uh, she gets a cancer breast, the cancer does not get spread to, to the, from one person to the other. Not for the baby, not from one other to the other. The breast uh, cancer does not spread to the baby. Okay. Uh, another question. Implants. Does they affect implants? Breast implants, do they increase the chances of breast cancer? Uh, the implant? Well, um, if the lady wants to have breast implants, before the breast implants, she has to be checked with mammogram even if her age is less than 40, to start with, to have a baseline of check up before putting the implant first. This is the, the, the right way to do it. Then she needs to regularly check up her, her own breast and the implants on regular intervals. She has the same average risk of getting cancer breast from her own glands, but sometimes uh, there are, um, Evolving talks about the risk of getting certain types of uh, lymphoma changes around the silicon implants in certain number, very small number of patients. But this this scientific talk is going on the background to they whether they want to approve it right now. There is no solid evidence uh, that this causes cancer breast, but there are evolving more and more cases about the lymphoma changes that happens, type of changes in the breast around the implants. Yes, there is a bit of risk, but still ongoing to prove it. This is a question I think has been answered in the presentation, but I will ask it. Is it normal that my breast doesn't have the same size? Again, Rawia? Is it normal that my breast doesn't have the same size? Yes. Uh, as I was saying, your right eye does not exactly look like your left eye. If you're putting coil, you will know that this opening is not exactly the same. We are not symmetrical. N no part of the uh, your own whole uh, uh, body is exactly symmetrical. They look almost symmetrical, but never identically symmetrical, okay? So this is normal that maybe 80% or more of the ladies have a difference in normal difference in size of the breast, even before getting married or uh, breastfeeding or anything. Sometimes this uh, size discrepancy gets even more pronounced after breastfeeding, yes. And this is normal, this is not abnormal. But Bye, if there is no breastfeeding or anything, and uh, the lady gets uh, feels that her breast is getting smaller and smaller and harder, she needs to go to the doctor, please. Tight brow, will it affect? Does it have an effect on increasing the chances of breast cancer? Is it okay to wear a bra at night or does that also increase the chances of breast cancer? Well, uh, it is not comfortable to, to wear a bra at night to start with, unless the breast is really, really big and the lady is more comfortable in wearing a loose bra to just give a light support at night, this is fine. But a tight bra at night is not comfortable and it is not, 
there is no solid evidence that it causes cancer breast, but it is not comfortable and it can cause you something called traumatic fat necrosis. It compresses part of your uh, fat and actually injure the fat at that point and makes a lump that can that makes you feel that there is uh, a cancer at that point. At some and sometimes we cannot differentiate until we take a biopsy. Does breast cancer related to food? Uh, there is no food that we say we will we can say that if we eat this a cancer breast will happen but there is always a healthy food that makes your health more um, and your immunity more solid to to combat anything so uh, in general eating healthy food is better uh, eating less processed meat less canned food is better and better better for your liver better for your every single part of your body, because there is lots of toxins in canned and processed meat. Uh, this is a question from a breast cancer survivor. Uh, she is asking, does she have to do the removal of the breast? She went through the chemotherapy. Um, she's been advised to remove her breast, but does she have to do it? Does she have to do to remove her breast? Yeah. There are two, uh, two ways of removing the breast. There is something called uh, mastectomy, which is removing the whole breast with the whole skin. Nothing is left behind apart from the chest hole. Uh, this, at certain points and certain cell types of breast cancers, uh, yes, it is recommended to remo remove everything. Or if the, the cancer is um, spreading everywhere, so if she remove part, residual will be there and she will be even exposed to more surgeries, more uh, problems later on. Yes, she, she needs to remove it according to her surgeons and oncologist uh, um, advice. There are other type of remo uh, 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 breast surgeries where the lady is um, lucky enough that her, um, her breast cancer is confined to the glands inside and the doctor can give her the opportunity of preserving her skin and nipple and areolar region, remove everything inside, put an implant, and preserve her skin and nipple. So she won't feel that she has removed her breasts. It's either one-step surgery or two-step surgeries, where they remove the contents inside, leave the skin and the nipple uh, alive, and put an implant instead of of the removed tissues. If the surgeon and oncologist advise to remove the breast, it is advisable to, to stick to the professional opinion. Okay. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am 35 years old. It happened while I was feeding my baby. I am in hormone treatment, but I want to ask, is the hormone treatment affect the mental health? Does the hormone treatment affect uh, mental health? Sometimes it. Yeah, I'm feeding my baby while I'm. Okay, uh, as any hormone, yes, the hormonal treatment sometimes affect the mood. Uh, as uh, us normally before the period, we get really tense and everything, um, but it will. Uh, it does not affect the mental health. It affects the the level of stress. You got my idea? There is a difference yeah. between the mental health and the, the stress level. You get stressed with more hormones or very less hormones, but uh, it does not affect your mental health. No, not at all. You have to be strong enough. You need to know that this is a stage that will pass and you will be at a much better status after finishing the hormonal treatment. Is the breast cancer can affect your body? If you want to get pregnant, or if you have breast cancer, can you still be pregnant? What are the risks? Um, there are certain stages at the beginning where the surgeons and oncologists uh, advise the lady not to get pregnant for a certain time, for a few years at the beginning, to avoid the, the female hormonal stress to be more. Because in pregnancy, the ho female hormonal stress is for nine months not for uh, tw uh, 21 days until the period comes, okay? So 
with certain breast cancers, it is advisable to avoid getting pregnant, to avoid the risk of this high stimulus on the breast for a certain time, and then sometimes they are, they can pass this ages, and then she can uh, get pregnant again, according to the cell type. Is having stretch marks or allergy spots on the breast or over the whole area of chest is a symptom of breast cancer? It is not a sign of breast cancer. Sometimes it's really more related to the collagen uh, activity in the body. Uh, there are uh, most of the ladies have, uh, without getting pregnant, even stretch marks on their thighs and buttock regions. It's related to sometimes um, uh, all of a sudden decrease in weight. Uh, uh, a very, uh, if you lose like 20, 30 kilos, you will get stretch marks. But these are not a sign of a definite or a suspicious sign on, of cancer breast, no. Does drinking carrot juice lessen the risk of having breast cancer or cancer in general? I know it's good for the eyes. Well, it's, it's, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, this is a nice question. Uh, it is, um, carrot juice has lots of antioxidants. Antioxidants help the body to uh, get rid of the toxins. Toxins, less toxins, less cancers everywhere, including the breast. Carrot juice some... is tasty at the end of the day. <laughs> Very true. I can vouch for that. <laughs> okay. If some grandmom has breast cancer, how much percentage lady can get it? So they're asking in general, if you have a family history, what is the percentage of you getting breast cancer? Yeah. Uh, the family history, we have to, to know. Uh, one degree, uh, one first degree family uh, member of uh, having cancer breast, mother, sister, or daughter having a cancer breast, one of them is uh, increasing the risk a little bit. Um, two increases the risk even higher. Two second degree relatives increase the risk as well. The point is, this is uh, a general talk. She needs to go to a specialized um, clinic, risk assessment clinic, where she does not only say that this, is, uh, the, this first uh, degree member has cancer rest only, they will ask her about when did she start the, uh, the period, if she fi finished the period or not, um, if she has any other types of cancer like ovarian cancer, she's at a higher risk. And sometimes they check the genes, the BRCA1 and BRCA2, as we were saying before. It's, uh, there is uh, lots of things on the internet where the, you can fill up an, like an application form where lots of questions get filled in for you to know whether you're an average risk or in high risk. It's not only the first degree relatives that will, only one first degree relative will make you a higher risk. Yes, it gives an, a little bit of risk, but are you a higher risk group patient or not? This uh, full risk assessment should be done. In your experience, can breast cancer be treated totally? Can be. Treated totally, can you get cured? from breast cancer and it will never come back? Cured, for sure. Uh, lots of cancer breast can be cured totally if we, if, we, if we catch it early. That's why we need to do the breast screening where we go and check our breast even before any complaint, even before we feel any lump or bump because it's a chance if you find something even before it can be felt by your own hands or the surgeon's hands. What type of um, lots of cancer there, breasts more than 80 percent is curable? What kind of doctor should I see if I think I have breast cancer? So, do they go to the gynecologist or there's a certain specialist that they have to go to? Yeah, uh, classically and ideally, they need to, to go for a breast surgeon if they don't find a breast surgeon. Uh, sometimes there is a GP specialized clinics to check or a family medicine doctor to check them. Even the gynecologist, they can tell their own gynecologist that they have a problem in breast. Uh, either the gynecologist will be expert enough to examine the breast or they will refer her to the surgeon. If you had a history of cervical cancer, 
but already treated five years ago. Is there any possibility to have breast cancer? Uh, she has a, a history of uh, can uh, cervical cancer, right? Yes, cervical cancer, yes. Uh, um, a gynecological, like uh, uterine and ovarian cancer, increases the risk a little bit, but she needs to further do the um, risk assessment. She has to check because there are sometimes a family history of BRCA behind the whole scene. what is the period or the time taken from stage one to then stage so there's asking um what are the time period from you detecting the breast cancer and how fast can it spread again Ramia? how fast can the breast cancer spread from hear. stage one how fast can the breast cancer spread from stage one no. to the final Mm, uh, uh, how long will it take to, to spread away from the breast? Yes. This is what you're saying. Yes, doctor. How, how long? Um, this is totally related. This is totally, again, related to the cell type. In stage one, uh, it is, uh, if you catch it in stage one, you're lucky and it's fine and it will be controlled easily, inshallah. But um, still, according to the cell line, some of the cancers are really labeled as cancers but they behave slowly and very wisely and if you ch if you catch them in stage one that's it you can cure them properly and everything is gone but still the lady will need to be checked regularly along the way stage one is an easy thing does the tumor always mean cancer does the tumor always mean cancer excuse me cannot hear you my dear Does the tumor always mean cancer? No. Tumor means no. T tumor means a lump. Okay. If I feel a lump, tumor is the the word tumor is a lump. Um, it does not mean a cancer. Sometimes the lump is benign. Sometimes the lump is a cyst, a bag of fluids. So don't be afraid to feel a lump. You need only to check it. A lump can be a growing cyst. It can be a fibroadenoma, which is something benign that does not turn into anything malignant. It can be sometimes, unfortunately, something bad. Yes. Why, doctor, do the mammogram and they do not do ultrasound immediately from the beginning? As mammograms are un uncomfortable. Why they do mammogram, not go to ultrasound immediately? Uh, yes. Um, we start with mammogram in the screening uh, uh, from 40 years of age and above because mammogram can see calcifications. Ultrasound in most of the times, in 90% of the cases, cannot see calcifications. And calcifications per se can be benign or malignant according to their size and their distribution. So uh, we, if, if I am above 40, I need to start with mammogram because it gives me more data. But when I find in mammogram uh, well-defined things, I need to know whether they are tissue or fluid by ultrasound, which ultrasound is uh, um, complementary. Mammogram is not an uncomfortable exam if you do it in the right timing. You cannot come and do a mammogram just before the period where your whole breast is stimulated, tense, engorged, painful by itself without getting compressed, and then I compress your tense breast. This will be not comfortable for sure. You need to come in the optimum timing, which is during the period or just after the period. At that time, and the new machines compress the, the, the breast in a very modified way. They don't compress just straight away. They compress and get oblique to reshape according to the breast shape. Are, are there a um, relation between thyroid and breast cancer? Thyroid. Thyroid. Yes, doctor. Yes, thyroid. 
yeah, uh, uh, there is no direct relation that uh, um, link breasts with thyroid, but there are some syndromes, which is a collection of events that happen together that might combine both, which is very, very rare. At that point, it will be syndromatic and genetic and so on. It's not usual. I went to the hospital to make the test and the doctor says, since you are not 40, you don't, nothing has been noticeable. But she still feel the pain. So uh, is there anything else she can do? No. Yeah, she can request an ultrasound. She can, she can get checked with an ultrasound still. Ultrasound will not expose her to any radiation. Um, uh, the ultrasound will differentiate if she has something cystic or solid. Uh, the ultrasound will help. Okay. Doctor, there are too many questions, but I'm going to take the last two questions because I know you have some patients to go back to. So one question here is, kindly tell us some exercise for healthy lifestyle. Exercises too? Exercise, what kind of exercise? Yeah, uh, to begin with, you need to, um, to feel more positive in the morning. If you wake up early, like 10 minutes before you go and start putting on your clothes to go to work, for example, start with stretches, not a, a t an intense exercise, only stretches where you lean forward. I have to show you. When you, you, you need just to put your hands behind your back and do like this. Okay, open up your chest, open up from here like this. Okay, few times you need to lean forward and stretch your back before you do anything else. You need to um, uh, sit in the Arabic position. Uh, <laughs> but you have to let your feet touch each other and push your knees down to stretch your hips to start to move in a better way. If you can, uh, when you go to work, if you're... Uh, if you can climb the stairs for one or two or three uh, floors, it's fine. It's better than taking the elevator. It's always a little bit of exercise will help you always. If you can walk for five minutes, it will help you it will, by the sea, in the street, cycle a little bit. All these things, it's, it should not be intense. You should not only go to a gym if you want to exercise. You can only exercise on your prayer mat, if you like. Okay. This is the final question. Is the placenta health has related to breast cancer? Is, is the placenta health related to breast cancer? Health? Uh, placenta health related to breast cancer. Well, um, let me tell you this in another way. Uh, there are um, no direct relation, but sometimes in, in genetic uh, uh there are um, successive kind of malignancies that happen be behind each other. Well, uh, like um, breast cancer getting followed by ovarian cancer, by uh, uterine cancer, these things. But the placenta per se health related to breast cancer, there is no direct relations, no. Thank you very much, doctor, for this informative session and for the QAA. Ladies, I know all of you are crossing fingers for the Thank you, raffle draw. Thank you, doctor, for the raffle draw. But before, we have one more question. Mammogram causes breast cancer. Is this a myth or a fact? Does mammogram cause breast cancer? Is this a myth or a fact? Is it a true statement or is it a false statement? A few seconds to vote. A 
excellent. I think we all have understood and we've grasped a lot of knowledge in this session. So for the moment that everyone been waiting for, our virtual command center, let's bring up the raffle draw for the shopping vouchers. So who will be our first winner? Sara Ranga or Ranja. Sara, congratulations being our first winner with the shopping vouchers. Let's now find the second one. Maryam Rashid. Alf Mabruk. Maryam Rashid, congratulations to our second winner. So congratulations to the winner. Our team from Adib will contact you shortly to hand over those gift vouchers. Thank you everyone for attending today and please help Adib in, spread, in, in spreading the knowledge. And thank you very much. Ravi Al-Qadir from Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank.